All right, so in this video, we are going to be talking about carbon atoms that have formal charges, and then we are going to learn how to identify the number of lone pairs on an atom based on their formal charges. So all charged carbon atoms are going to have three bonds regardless of if that charge is positive or negative. So a little terminology here, we have carbocations, which are carbons with a positive charge. And then down here, we have carbanions, which are carbons with a negative charge. Um, and every single one of these molecules that's drawn has three bonds. Um, and so the next slide, we're going to see why. So basically, it's just from the missing hydrogen atoms that are not drawn in bond line structures. And if you're having trouble with this concept, I would go back and watch the video about how to draw bond line structures. And then I'll give a little more explanation on why these hydrogens are not there. So now we're going to learn how to identify formal charges. So first off, if an atom has lone pairs and it is a neutral atom, it is not required to draw out the lone pairs. But if an atom has lone pairs and it has a formal charge, like in the case of this oxygen, it has this negative charge, you must either draw all of the lone pairs or you must draw in that charge on it. So these two mean the exact same thing. And so what we're going to learn next is how to take this given right here with just a charge and determine how many lone pairs are actually on it. So the first step is to determine the number of valence electrons that that atom would normally have as a neutral atom. So we have an example down here that we're going to work through. Um, this oxygen has a positive charge. So oxygen, if you look at the periodic table, wants to have six valence electrons. But this positive charge is showing us that it does not have six valence electrons. Um, and because it's a positive one charge, we know that that oxygen is missing one valence electron. Therefore, this oxygen here has five valence electrons, not six. And so the next step um, is to see how many of those valence electrons are coming from the bonds. So it has five valence electrons, and we know, because all of the bonds are drawn out here, that one, two, three of these valence electrons are coming from bonds. So we're going to subtract three from five, because this oxygen has five valence electrons. Three of them are coming from bonded electrons, and so that leaves two electrons left over that are not bonded to anything. And those are going to be the, the number of electrons in lone pairs. So in this case, there are two electrons that are not bonded. And so that will give us one total lone pair. So remember, this is going to be the number of electrons, not the number of lone pairs. So now we're going to do a little bit of practice. Um, pause the video and see if you can figure out how many lone pairs this nitrogen has and how many lone pairs this oxygen has. So here are the answers. Um, we know that nitrogen wants to have five valence electrons, but with that positive charge, we know that it's missing a valence electron. So that nitrogen has four valence electrons, and then we count the number of them coming from bonds. In this case, there are one, two, three, four valence electrons coming from bonds. So when we subtract those two, it leaves us with zero. So this nitrogen has no lone pairs. For the oxygen, um, it's pretty much the same concept as the other example we saw. Oxygen wants six electrons. It has a positive charge, so we know that it really has five in this situation. Um, when we subtract out the number of valence electrons coming from bonds, we have one, two, three coming from bonds, which leaves us with two. So there are two electrons um, acting as lone pairs, which gives us one total lone pair. I hope you found this video to be really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what Organic Chemistry 1 class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson Building. You will find all the details you need about these services on our website, 
www.baylor.edu slash tutoring. You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during any of our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.